Hey bosses, it's Marie from Asian Boss. Can you imagine what it's like living as a minority in a largely homogenous society? We recently got a chance to ask a group of black people about their experiences in Korea and Japan. To conclude the series, today we're going to hit the streets of Shanghai to find out what it's like being black in China in 2021. Let's go! So, where are you from and how long have you been living in China? Um, so, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona in the US and I've been living in China for, I think, nine months now. I've been here for about five years now. I'm from Maryland, from the United States. I'm from Ethiopia. I've uh, been living in Shanghai for almost five years now. Uh, I'm from New York originally, but my family's from Ghana and I've been in China for a little bit more than six years now. I am from Johannesburg, South Africa, and I've lived in China for about four and a half years now. I'm from Los Angeles, California, in the States, and I've been living here for about a year and a half. Today we want to discover people's stories when it comes to being black in China, but first of all, uh, why did you come decide to come to live in China in the first place? Well, I was looking for a place to move abroad. Um, really, I was just like looking for any any place that was like a big city. Um, and then I came across Shanghai, and it just checked all my boxes. Um, I don't like driving. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to good public transportation, low cost of living, and uh, I found Shanghai and China. Looked it up, and it just it was perfect. Well, the main reason why I came to China is because like. I was very fascinated with just the Chinese calligraphy and the artistry and some of the how the characters were developed. And actually, I have a tattoo here I got when in my 20s. So I always thought the Chinese calligraphy was a bit poetic. And I studied a bit of Chinese also in the States, very little bit. And then I thought to myself, hey, might as well just come here and just see how it is. So I just had a very go as I, you know, go as go like day by day process but then I met her and then that became long term. Prior to coming to China did you have any concerns about being black in this country? Um, yeah I had a few because uh, that not just me but also my family uh, because most of the understanding of China that we had uh, mainly came from the media you know like the whole communism thing and everything uh, so like I had like a little bit of concern about like being um, like a minority and this was like literally my very first time being a minority outside of my country as well. I would just worry that people might like stare at me, touch my hair, um, yeah I think those are the biggest concerns. <laughs> Do they stare, did like have you, did you experience that? Yeah people def definitely did. I think someone's is staring right now. <laughs> Hi. But anyways, anyways, yeah, people definitely stare. Um, they'll take pictures of you when you're out in public. Ma not really so much in Shanghai, but like if you go to more rural areas, the people who've like never seen a black person before, you'll definitely get some stares. Definitely want to talk to you. Definitely, you know, want to touch your skin. Well, before I didn't realize that China was actually so diverse. You know, I already had in the back of my mind like perceptions about what China was like, perceptions about, you know, what Shanghai was like, you know, things that we read on the internet or hear in the news and things like that. So that's all I knew, you know, that it wasn't very, like, you know, the Chinese people weren't very open-minded and stuff like that. But, you know, obviously when I came here, I was like, yo, there's foreigners everywhere, you know, foreign restaurants everywhere. It's really not like how media portrays, you know, the country to be. I come from South Africa, which is a country that has a very recent history of stand sanctioned racism. And so I've always kind of been aware that that might be an issue wherever I go. And then even when I lived in the States, you know, the Black Lives Matter protests, I mean, I was just really scared of, you know, being in a place that would like further this kind of racism, right? Or kind of further my thoughts about living in a racist country or community. After George Floyd's death, there's been Black Lives Matter protests not only in the US, but in many con Asian countries, such as Korea and Japan, um, to address the issue in those like countries. Um, how was the Black Lives Matter movement received in China? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, I don't think it was well really publicized. I didn't really hear a lot of movements out here outside of hashtags. Um, a lot of the, my Chinese friends that I did, uh, I do have here, uh, they did hashtag it. I guess that's really the extent 
of um, any kind of reaction here in China that I saw. Interesting you asked that question because like a month ago, I was walking around in, um, near my house, my, my housing area, and I saw like these Chinese couple, they're wearing Black Lives Matter shirt. I gave them this nod, like, thank you. And I was very shocked by that. Um, for me, I didn't think that that news, that information from George Floyd's death would resonate all the way to China, but it did. It, it hit a certain amount of population. It hit the, I would say, the millennials the most. They really are into the black culture, it seems like. My mom doesn't know this incident. And she wouldn't care. <laughs> she she didn't she know care. about that because uh, people at her age will be like, yeah. uh, not that international, not that ha has no. a view of like uh, worldwide to see things happening yes. other places, especially for like yeah. uh, female at that time. That like worldwide 60, view. 65 years old. Yeah. Were you able to like protest or voice out your matter, um, your voice on this matter while living in China? Oh, no, not in China. Definitely not in China. Um, like I said, at school, we haven't really addressed it. And obviously, in outside of school, they, they're not really keen to address these type of things. So that hasn't really been an outlet, any type of opportunity for me to make my voice heard with any of these social justice movements. I don't think there was a movement. <laughs> Because it's not allowed. Well, not not in that traditional way of protest, right? Like, we can protest in our own ways, which is why China's particularly interesting. Because we're we're trying to be more creative about ways we can protest. Don't deport me. <laughs> about ways we can protest, right? So we can't do it the traditional way of standing up on a road with our fists in the air, right? Never. Um, but what are, what can we do in our close knit communities, right? What can we do in our work environments? Um, what are some stereotypes Chinese have towards Black people? Ooh, <laughs> um, I find that maybe the stereotypes are very surface level, based off of like a lot of the commercial um, production of Black people in the U.S. Um, from Hollywood and things like that. So I feel like a lot of the stereotypes involve like hip hop and rap and things like that. I'm not really a short guy, so they might look at me and be like, oh, that guy plays basketball. Or if I go to like buy something, sometimes a shopkeeper, their only connection to China is either like basketball or Obama. So then they try and start a conversation with me about Obama, and, which I don't really feel that strongly about. So sometimes it's awkward, but it's interesting to know that they kind of make those connections. Yeah. And another stereotype, maybe that all black people are from Africa. Well, not well. All black people are from Africa, but like literally came from Africa, African citizenship. Whereas I'm African American, so I'm second generation, and I think a lot of people don't really understand that. So even when I say I'm American, then they're like, "Oh wait, no, you're not from Africa. Like, aren't you from North Africa?" There's a lot of negative stereotypes that have been kind of impressed by the media historically that haven't had a chance to dissipate. Um, I mean, I feel like we've all seen those commercials, right? The ones where like the toothpaste commercial where my man's hopped in the laundry machine, he came out Chinese. He started black and he came out Chinese. Or like, there was another commercial, I don't remember what it was for, but it was a black guy. He climbed all the way to the top of a flagpole and like turned Chinese when he got to the top. Just stuff like that where I guess the implication is like black people are dirty and something to be purged or clean. How are these uh, different stereotypes different from um, stereotypes people might have in the U United States? Mm, okay, yeah, I was thinking about this. I figured that you might ask, ask me this. So I think in China, in some cases, especially in cases where there's not that many black people, rural areas, very touristy areas, a lot of the stereotypes or interest in black people comes from curiosity. Like they've never seen somebody that looks different from them before it'll be like oh my god look at that white war and like you know where are you from you know are you african like it's just this curiosity but in the u.s it's kind of like especially where i'm from i'm from la so like in such a racially culturally linguistically diverse city race relations manifest differently there so like stereotypes might be you know, you walk past someone, um, or, you're, or you're walking in a store, right? This happened to me and my friends, and like the shopkeeper might think that you're stealing, right? Because like blackness is inherently criminal. And what areas do you feel like the most challenges due to the color of your skin? Uh, I think probably just meeting people. That's 
project because it's all just based on like first impressions and I love to meet people I love trying to like practice my Chinese with people and talk with people if they're interested in me I'd love to talk with them but um, some people just might have their like guard up when they see me something like that or they might you know not even like want to talk with me something like that the biggest challenge I will say is not being accepted by her family her mom her mommy yeah. yeah her mommy basically said she just said this to me she was like not to me she said to you and mm. you told me mm. I should enough well, you should have it's you know communication honesty you need that anyway she said to her I would prefer you to be with a white male a white foreigner than a black person I don't have a problem with you being with a foreigner I just have a problem that he's black she said that and I've never been invited to any large family dinners it's always like minute, either her mom or a friend or a cousin, but nothing big because even though we've been together for like eight years, no, seven years or eight years, she doesn't feel comfortable to let yeah. everybody in her family know that she's with me. The biggest challenge I would say would be in the job market, um, specifically in education. I'm a teacher here. Um, and so I think you'll see a lot of job posts of and recruiters talk about um, they're looking for a white man or a white woman for this teaching position, um, which is like really disheartening to see, right? Because it's literally just because of the color of your skin and has nothing to do with your credentials, how well you will connect with those kids. It's, you will not be uh, eligible for this position. Like, I'm a native speaker, right? I was born and raised in the US. I'm a journalism major. I've been teaching for a while. I'm more than qualified to do uh, a teaching job, right? Um, and it just, to not even be considered, kind of hurts, you know what I mean? For for literally no other reason but this trivial thing of skin color. Have you ever been discriminated against in China based off of your skin color? Yeah, so there's some notable clubs that don't let you in because you're black, and they'll tell you at the door, like, no, we don't let black people in. Um, but that's really, I can't say I've, I've ever been I guess uh, blocked from opportunity or like been told no you can't eat here things of that nature it's really just clubbing uh, we were trying to go use the restroom and you know this man wasn't letting us go he pointed us another direction we came back we saw the other people going in and so eventually we just walked in but when we came back we asked him like you know why are you not letting us in and he didn't really have an answer but the, the problem with when things are a little off because, you know, every once in a while there are people who might uh, clutch their purse or things like that. Or people in elevators who might want to not be in the elevator with me and will leave here. I, it's always complicated to say, okay, is it because I'm a foreigner? And maybe you think that, like, I have COVID for some reason. I don't know that why, why that would be a thing. But I, it's always hard to say, is it because I'm a foreigner or is it because I'm black? And that's always a weird tension here. Then how did, like, these discriminations make you feel? Um... Like deep down, it makes it definitely makes you feel low, just because, you know, you want to be celebrated for who you are and accepted for who you are. Because deep down, we're really all the same inside. And personally, I think it kind of makes me feel sorry for the world in a way because that's just one more barrier that we have between us to separate us. You know, like I think everyone in this world speaks a common language, it's like smiling. When you smile at someone, no matter where you are all over the world, people can recognize that. But I think it's unfortunate that, you know, something that's outside, something you can't control might affect how people see that smile. Overall, do you think the perceptions in China towards black people have changed over the years or in your time being here? I feel like it's getting there. Like the younger generation is being like, you know, they're growing up. There's a lot more younger people that just grow up with the internet and they know like and more people are just interested in like black culture in general here um they're becoming like more open and i think that's a lot because of the music industry like hip-hop is becoming extremely popular like all over china you know with the new generation and you know, black people, we dominate the hip hop industry. We dominate the music industry. So they see these things and they're just like, really want to be friends with black people. 
and then you also have like particular people who are from who are, who are foreigners who are also speaking to their Chinese friends about certain situations that they're going through right because we all felt it when George Floyd died it didn't matter where you were you know um, you all felt it when Trayvon Martin died it didn't matter where you were and so you know us crying out here even to our friends people are going to hear people hear that here because of us we talked about many negative experiences but mm -hmm. are there any positive stories that you can share about being black in china yes there's so many positive experiences about being black in china and i don't want to focus on the negativity because you know blackness isn't just a negative thing it's also it's joy it's it's beauty so yeah i like i really like that question um, I think the community that I found here, I think coming in, I was so worried that I would not find anybody that looked like me. I felt like I wouldn't, you know, find anyone that would help me do my hair. Like, if I was having moments of isolation, who could I turn to? Um, but I, I was surprised that there are, like, different, like I said, there's different group chats for, you know, black women to connect. You know, I just have to text the group chat, like, can anybody do box braids? And they'll, they'll send me to another group chat. Um, so there's moments where I really do feel like I'm connected. It's an interesting experience um, because you do have some some really overt racism, but you also have people that that love you because you're black. That want to take a picture because you like you get in the cab and they're like, "Wow, your hair is so cool! Like, let me take a picture." Or, "Hey, like, you know, you're dripped out. That outfit is clean. Like, let me take it." Stuff like that um, that that really makes you feel good, to be honest. Um, knowing you can make someone's day because you're black, that's like a very valid feeling. I would say one positive story is meeting her, right? So but it's not only because you're black, it's you are just you. Hmm. When I first met her, right? The first comment she said to me, I dance like a black girl. <laughs> so she was trying to impress me. I think I intimidated her because I was different. My statue, my looks, skin yeah, color, it, it was a part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, talking about just meeting. Yes. But later on, we uh, uh, we date for so long and we finally got married. It's not because of that. I know, yeah. I know. But I think it was a part of it. Yeah, yeah, a part of, of it. Because I was there. It's because I'm that kind of girl who is into hip hop culture way, mm -hmm. like maybe 10 or 15 years ago so I listened to that uh, kind of music and I, I like the the way um, some kind of the, the dress style uh, the dance style uh, so that uh, I will be more interested to uh, meet uh, one person uh, in person that's why uh, I try to uh, like talk to him at, at the first uh, at, at the first time mm. yeah. it, it helps what do you wish people in China and around the world um, like know about being black in 2021 like anything do you want to say to them yeah i think honestly honestly and truly it is exhausting to have um your skin be so political right something that doesn't really shouldn't really matter but it does and i understand why it matters and i like you know i write poetry about it but a part of me wish wishes that it didn't right I wish that I could walk down the street in a tourist area and that nobody would look at me and nobody would care or that I could walk in a store in the US and you know people wouldn't fear that I would you know steal or or take shit from their store but you know unfortunately my body is political you know me being black in China during you know during a pandemic is political and you can't really escape that but I want people to know that it's exhausting, um, but it's also beautiful. There's communities here, um, and yeah, <laughs> exhausting and beautiful. I would like people to know that being black is beautiful. Um, being, being black is powerful, and I, I love myself, and the only way that black people are going to be equal is if we take seriously what love means, right? We need to really take seriously what humanity means. And when we're seen as human, and when you not only love us through lip service, but through policies and systems, and um, opportunities and access, and love us out of poverty, that's the only way that we can all begin to be human and live together as one. Well.